This is a small uh, talk on meditation. Haven't done one for a while. And uh, those who are interested in finding meditation, I think the speed the world is going at now, we're, we're hearing more and more of people with uh, mental health conditions. This word mental health can be thought of as um, quite a drastic thing. I think we just worry more nowadays. We've got so much more, you know, that we're burdened with than when I was younger. I have children, pets, business, you know. I thought life was as busy as it could get, you know. I had periods over the time where I'd almost had a nervous breakdown. Perhaps I did have a breakdown, who knows. And um, I never seeked a great deal of help, apart from the doctors feeding you pills, telling you that, you know, uh, take these, they're not addictive. You can stop them at any time, just to find that the reverse <laughs> of what they tell you is the real truth. I can't remember, there was one called Suroxat that I was on. It took me nearly two years to get off it. It's a, it was a dreadful, I don't know if it's still out there, but it was a dreadful one. So getting on about mental health is just the pressures of life causing us all to have mental health problems. And other younger people less likely to be able to cope with it because it, we may struggle with it, but realise we have to get on with life. We've got too many responsibilities. As I said, if we've got children, you know, a house to run, apartment, anything, it's uh, we we've, we've got ourselves in this mess. You can't sadly stop growing up, and as you grow up, even being at home in your own room, that's got all the best comforts you could think of. But we can't run away from our mind. So most of the things that I've talked about and done in life, I've either met people or people have just confirmed what I believed in myself. I didn't read much at all until I was in my 50s. So I didn't ob obtain this information um, through books. So I wasn't confused, polluted or enlightened by books. I used to think, well, this is what I think and I used to go with that. And it's quite interesting that um, when you do hear somebody speak or you or you pick up a book that you think would help, uh, you'd like to read it. And I have such a book that I'd like to recommend at the moment. And this book here, it's, um, you know, he's a top selling writer and also a top meditator. What I liked about this book, and it may be a little bit patting my own ego, but what I like about it is he says he's almost like I could put my name to the book. You must have read books that occasionally if you read books or you might have heard somebody say uh, in, a, in a lecture or just heard in conversation you'd think well that's exactly how I feel that's exactly the way I look at it I'm sure you have so reading that this particular book I'm so pleased because I mean yeah, I could just perhaps put it down halfway through and think oh well he says everything I say why, why bother to read it at the end? But what I like about what he's saying is, I've done a lot, of, nowhere near as much obviously meditation as he has, but what I like about it is, I've come to the same conclusion that if you sit in, say, the lotus position, any uncomfortable position, we're doing it for other reasons than wanting to meditate. We're perhaps guided by seeing monks in the kneeling position. 
and we're perhaps trying to cleanse our soul, whatever that is to each of us. Trying to become a better person, so we're having to do it by self-punishment. Punishing the body and having to put up with the pain that we may get in these seated positions. So, one thing I'd like to pass on today in this conversation is um, the word meditation most people won't do or would like to do but doesn't have time to do it. Is it so difficult to find a quiet room? Do you have to wait for the children to go to bed? Do you have to wait for the traffic outside to calm down? Well, some things we have to accept, like the sitting in a painful position. But my advice to you, and it has been on other films, sit in a chair where you're upright, you're supported, and you feel comfortable, but not in a slouching way comfortable, but in a, in a nice, fixed, stabilised posture that supports you back as well as your uh, base. Make your feet so they're comfortable. If you're a short person and the chair you've chosen, your feet can't touch the ground, place books under each feet and perhaps a towel on top of them so you don't start worrying if the books feel cold or slippery because of the covers. If you've got yoga blocks, perhaps put your feet on two yoga blocks. Don't try to fit your feet onto one small object. All of this is about making yourself comfortable because, again, as I've said before, it's the mind that needs to learn how to meditate, not the rest of the body. We'll keep the body in this conversation as something separate and if you wish to punish the body in other ways, let's leave that for another time. The first thing that um, you have to do that I believe in the book states it as well, is before you even consider meditating, you can talk about the word if you wish, but before you consider sitting down and meditating and thinking that oh dear, that was difficult, and your mind is busy, or lots of things where you consider is too difficult to do. First of all, one thing he says, and I really like this, you learn, you need to learn how to concentrate. So I'm going to show you a piece of paper that I've prepared. You can do it on any card or piece of paper, this small dot. And what you do is find a distance that is comfortable to you. Try not to keep altering the distance, but try, I suggest, about 1,200 to 1.5 metres away from you. At eye level, you don't want to be looking down, you don't want to be looking up, you want it dead on your eye level. And all you do is you concentrate on the black spot. And you concentrate as long as you can. Try to notice when your mind wanders or you switch off and you're actually looking, you're gazing into oblivion. You're not looking at the spot anymore. So I'm staring at the camera at the moment just to show you that I'm staring at the camera. But really I'm looking at a picture over here, a picture over there. You know, I can see through a window in my right side. So I'm finding that my mind's finding lots of things to concentrate and look at, except the black dot. So you may want to rush this process, but, but you cannot. There is, <laughs> my father used to say, there's no such word as can't. You can do anything if you want to. So please realise that before you even consider any of my meditations, 
we must go right back beyond square one, beyond square one. Find a card, white card, not a coloured card. A white piece of paper, not a coloured piece of paper. A round dot, not too big, not too small. Big enough for you to see from no more than a metre and a half. Closer if you wish, but you don't want it in your face. You don't want to be staring at, you know, you don't want to be staring at this dot because it's imposing, you know, it's imposing on me. Move it away, move it away until your inner mind tells you I'm okay with that. I don't feel it encroaching on me whatsoever. I now don't feel that I'm straining to see it because it's too far away. You may have to do this for weeks and weeks. If you could do it each day for a few minutes and build it, you need to find peace. You need to unplug any landline phones if you still have them. You need to remove any mobile phones from the area, turn them to silent, place them somewhere in your house, apartment, or wherever you are. And you need to find a quiet space, as quiet as possible. But before you start, also acknowledge that there may be sounds. Now, as I talk to you, I hear birds whistling, and it's lovely, and I can accept that. But if my dog starts barking outside the door, I might think, oh, go away, Sanchia, go away. I'm trying to talk to people on this film. Well, it's the same thing as, oh, go away, I'm trying to concentrate. But don't let that worry you. Let your mind go over to the door and where she's barking and then bring the sound back to you and know that you must have heard the sound and as I've said before don't you instantly go to the sound whatever the sound is but then the sound owns you if you can then just come back to yourself and say okay whatever sound comes I will accept it in here lightly I would just accept it. I might even thank it for being a test, to testing my concentration and my peacefulness of mind. Again, concentrate back on the dot. If you've got your seat in a standard position and, and the paper is in a, or card is in a distant same place, just settle yourself back in the chair, even if you never moved. Just settle yourself. <sighs> Perhaps have a nice outward calming breath. Soften your gaze and go back to concentrating on the spot. See, through concentrating on that spot and only on that spot, what you're doing is you're meditating without knowing it. Because you're learning how to hold an item without confusing it with other items. And you're being able to do it with your eyes open rather than with your eyes closed. A lot, once you become good, you close your eyes and perhaps see the dot. So by looking at the dot, looking at the dot, do this, as I say, every day for a few weeks. And then slowly, slowly looking at the dot, slowly closing your eyes and you may still be seeing the dot in front of you. And just keep concentrating on the dot. Try not to squint, try not to look too hard, you know. Check to see if you're doing this. You may not realise that you're, you're pulling yourself towards it and squinting. 
You can always have that lovely out breath. Try to smile, looking at the dot. Within all of this, you will start controlling the ego mind, the mind that wants to look at the picture up here, the window out there, the picture down there, anything to take you away from holding the concentration of nothingness. Now looking at a spot, the dot is something, so that's not looking at nothingness, um, but it's making you focus on something other than any other thoughts that may come into your mind that bombard you throughout the day. The mind is like a, a flash lamp going on, 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 on. And there's so much information coming into you by focusing on the dot. I think that it's up to you when you find the time I like to think, how do I feel? Mm, reasonably calm. I try not to do it when I feel, you know, all my emotions up in the air. I used to. I used to think, oh, I must go and calm myself. I must go and calm myself. But you can calm yourself by just sitting in a chair and just taking time out. You don't have to rush off, pull the phones out, switch everything off. Shout to your partner, I've got to have peace, I've got to go. <laughs> Looking at the dot, you will soon start gazing outwardly and being in what I call a daydream rather than doing what you're supposed to do. So the best time I think to concentrate on the spot is either first thing in the morning, go to the bathroom, wash water through your eyes, Make sure your eyes are nice and clear and you're wide awake. Move. Pull these odd faces if you need to, to give yourself a little bit of exercise, lift your eyebrows, whatever you need to do. And then calmly sit and concentrate as long as you can on the dot. Perhaps before you go to bed, you may be tired, but you might want to just a little bit of water again. And just peacefully look at the dot. You'll soon find out when is your best times. Again, I reiterate, please do not do it when you're emotionally uh, entwined in whatever's upsetting you. Because you cannot escape it. It's better to just go and sit and calm yourself down and think that you, this is the time to meditate. It's not. Thank you for listening. I hope this helps.